my 30 year old soldering iron died on me about two months ago and I had to buy a new one so this is the one I chose it's uh, I think it was originally called A1 case or something but Hanmatech SD1 and it's uh, the one that I used to have was just a 40 watt soldering iron it didn't have much of uh, anything other than either on or off because it was just a plug so I thought uh, when I was going to upgrade, I was going to get something the same. But then I thought uh, for a little bit more money, I could get one that has temperature control. So this one has temperature control. Not sure if it was something I was really going to use, but I have found it to be very useful, actually, to be able to limit the temperature and turn it up when I'm heating up uh, larger components that need more heat. I'll go through a few of the things that I've noticed about it. I've used it now for about two months and uh, first thing I did was uh, I got rid of this sponge. I started, I was using the sponge at first, I've always been a guy with a sponge, but decided to upgrade and get some something that I could clean the tip with like this. Seems to work pretty good. Um, a lot of the solder slag would just collect down here and then some of it would collect in the base here, and this base plate actually comes off. There's two screws so that you can clean out where the slag from the, the solder would fall. The uh, cord here seems to be pretty flexible. Could probably be better. I don't. They say that it's silicone. I'm not sure that it actually is. But uh, it looks like you could, if you could find a replacement, you could replace this with a... Uh, a different soldering iron. It's got a five pin connector there. The other thing people are usually asking about is what kind of power it takes. So it takes anywhere from 85 to 275 volts AC and it's got a standard plug that you'd find on any computer. The one that I ordered came with North American plug. I made sure that that's one that I was ordering and that's one I got. But if you didn't, you could probably just take any computer plug and plug it in there. And I just noticed it looks like the fuse is right there. Oh, so the fuse is easily accessible. So if you do blow the fuse, you can easily replace it. It also comes with a part that you have to attach. This is the uh, for holding your solder. So you can put your solder in there. I don't know how useful that is, but uh, I actually have been using it because uh, it was there. I thought, well, I'll try it out. And I actually have been using it. It's kind of nice. So let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside because that was my question when I was buying it. Does it have a transformer in it? What does it look like inside? Does it look like it's going to last? So I'll go open it up and we'll take a look. I can tell you right now that it doesn't feel very heavy inside. So I'm pretty sure there's no transformer inside. And surprise, surprise, no transformer. It does have a circuit board in there. 
So I'm not actually going to pull a circuit board out. I'm not sure how it comes out. I'm thinking we're going to we would probably have to take off the display here. And uh, I don't want to break it because I do use it. So I just wanted to point out that there's no transformer in there. So I don't know what these uh, heat dissipation vents are for because there's probably going to be no heat there because the circuit board is over here and the vents are over there. And there's no transformer in here, so there's going to be no heat from a transformer. The only thing would be this uh, component back here. From I can't really see what it is, but uh, I'll tell you how the how it works as far as usability. So now that it's back together, I'll give you a few of the specs that I discovered, or measured the AC cord is four feet which is just long enough for it to reach from my desk down to the floor and the cord for the soldering iron is three feet from the flexible strain relief to the other flexible strain relief it is about three feet it does have an adjustment that goes from 200 to 480 degrees Celsius or 392 Fahrenheit to 896 Fahrenheit and it's uh, I don't know if it's accurate or not I don't have something to measure the temperature of the tip but the dial definitely does uh, change the temperature you can change it from just barely being able to melt melt the solder to being able to melt solder and heat up larger components and there is a little calibration Port right there that you could put in a screwdriver and uh, adjust. So I did a quick test to see if the temperature was actually accurately or semi-accurately controlling the temperature of the tip. There does seem to be some feedback from the heater circuit to what what this LED light is doing because when I turned it from 400 degrees to 300 degrees and just in the air it took approximately 40 seconds, 44 seconds to cool down and then I put some water in my in the tray here just to cool down the tip quicker to see if that time would change and it actually dropped it down to 15 seconds so there is some feedback from the heater circuit in here to the dial here so this light is actually kind of indicating that this temperature of the soldering iron is ready but uh, I guess because there's uh, the tip has some mass and the heater is not in contact with uh, the tip really tight, that it uh, there is a little bit of a delay or or whatever. I'm going to shut it off and I'll take it apart and I'll show you some the tip close up. Okay, so the soldering irons had a chance to cool. The uh, tip is replaceable by unscrewing this and looking at it, the nut is not uh, cut very straight, but at least it, it holds it. So there's the cover and there's the tip, there's the heater. And the reason I think there might be a delay in the tip cooling off and the heater kicking back in is because the there's a bit of space here. It's a little bit wiggly, loose. I don't know if that's it or if it's just not a very good circuit. For my uses, I find it adequate. So now for some important uh, details about the soldering iron if you want to replace the tips. The tip on this one is approximately 1.8 millimeters across. The inside diameter of the tip is 4.06 millimeters the outside diameter is 6.45 millimeters the heater is about 3.81 millimeters in diameter oh, oh in in diameter and the cover the inside diameter of this is 7.36 millimeters inside and the whole is 5.84 millimeters so 
there's not a lot holding that tip in place. They could have made this hole maybe a little bit smaller. And I could see possibly over time that, especially if you have the wrong size tips, you could end up pushing that through. So far I'm pretty happy with this. It does what I need it to do. And I was looking at just replacing my 30 year old 40 watt soldering iron with another soldering iron that just uh, you plug it in and it's on you unplug it it's off this one here has the temperature control It'll give me a little bit of flexibility so if I'm working with a circuit board I keep it down around 350 so that I'm not heating up the traces too much so they lift but if I'm working on something a little heavier I can crank it up to heat up the uh, components that suck a lot more heat out of the tip The, uh, I did buy some replacement tips. I got this tip off of uh, Amazon as well, and it's considerably smaller. It pretty much comes down to a point, so it'd be a lot easier for soldering some of those surface mount components. But in a video I did, I did show how I use this tip, which is 1.8 millimeters in diameter, to solder a, a wire onto a surface mount component. So the solder iron tips that I found replacements for, these tips here, these are the 900 MTB or 900 MTI tips and they come in a pack of 10 and there's five of the really pointy ones and then five of the ones that look like the same size as the one that are in there so if anybody's interested like and subscribe and I'll uh, grind one of these and take a look at see what material it's made out of anyways that's it oh one quick point anybody who solders wires in a car or has bigger wires to solder and stuff you shouldn't be using something like this anyway, so you need to be using something more like this. Something that has a lot more power. This is 100 to 140 watt. Picked this up at a garage sale for like 8 bucks. Works great. Uh, two position switch. And that tip will get nice and hot for soldering wires even on in windy days and outside. So my recommendation for this soldering station is, it seems to work fine for my uses. It costs 50 bucks. I was going to spend 30 bucks just on a soldering iron. This one has some temperature control, which is nice. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, the tips, package of 10 of these tips on eBay, sorry, Amazon, cost 13 bucks. So for roughly 65 bucks, I've got some extra tips. I've got a soldering station with temperature control and uh, the tip of the soldering iron is actually tied to ground so if you're soldering anything where there's any live power keep that in mind. Uh, zero resistance from the tip of this to to the neutral, or sorry, the ground. <laughs>